Okay, so uh, what do we got here? We got past and future collide. Uh, I'm not reading any of this text because it's stupid. We finally got the full Jubilee kit. As expected, Jubilee didn't know this, but we, we were hoping and we were praying. Jubilee uh, always applies blind in raids and regular 70% chance to apply blind, which is still any percent chance to apply blind. We could stop reading right here and accept the fact that this one ability puts her at such a high power level comparatively that her kit is now legendary. Just this. Everything else, irrelevant. This one ability puts her at, like, high milestone elitist character, right? She is phenomenal with this ability. So, yes, am I still pissy that Jubilee was chosen as the legendary? Of course I am. She's a dog shit character in the lore of Marvel. I didn't doubt that her kit was going to be good. I've said many times, I believe her kit has to be great if you were going to take this kind of uh, questionable uh, approach to choosing the character. But again, we got a kit that at the first ability tells us like this character is good. Moving to the second one, Plasmoid Party, ready on turn two. Not on turn one. I don't believe it's ready on turn one. Ah, either way, it starts with three energy. We'll call it that way. It'll be ready on turn two uh, outside of her team. If maybe, maybe there's some kind of effort that might make her faster. But either way, apply offense up to all self and astonishing X-Men allies. That's a strike. Yeah, but like, I didn't know if they gave energy out. If, if like what, if like one of their kits or Bishop, because I don't really remember everything about Bishop's kit. Um, I don't think they do. So like she's like you know how like crossbones ult on turn one with Zemo that's what I'm saying. Uh, offense up to all self attack primary target for, arbit this 300 damage is what we said before. This means nothing. It literally 300 damage means nothing. It could be a million bajillion. Like if her base damage number is under 20k, then this is under 60 thousand damage. Um, you know, like that's all it comes down to. If it's 10k, this is 30,000 damage. And those numbers are what's relevant. So because we see percentage, it doesn't necessarily mean anything because we have numbers that we have to come on to. Uh, gain assist at 50% from all astonishing X-Men allies. Gain assist at 50% from two random non-summoned, non-astonishing X-Men. So this line right here is huge. And I don't think we saw that one day initially. I think we just saw this. Um... The fact that even outside of her team, she will gain an assist from non-X-Men allies is huge. This alone makes this ability way better than we originally thought. Um, the fact that it only applies offense up to Sanji X-Men is kitschy, but it's not bad. This attack is unavoidable and cannot be blocked. Great. Uh, on kill, spread three negative effects from the primary target to all others. This will not spread stun. This ability is phenomenal. Inside the X-Men team, it is very clearly more powerful. Outside of the X-Men team, uh, it is good. And that's what you look for. You look for a character that works very well with their team, but has usability and viability outside in your legendary. She does this. Great, great ability. Uh, ultimate, ready on turn one. Energy cost. Attack primary target for four quadrillion bajillion damage. Doesn't matter. Plus 50% piercing, which is actually a little bit more relevant. Then reduce speed bar. And apply stun. Attack all other enemies for half, almost half damage. Apply plus one slow to all enemies. Now, there's a difference between apply slow and apply plus one slow. And that's where you see things like Jubilee Emma, Jubilee uh, Maw, any Jubilee um, Crystal. You can get really clever because it extends the slow as opposed to some characters that just place a slow and if it's there already, they do nothing. So this ability, ready on turn one, has no need for uh, Astonishing X-Men, is truly fucking phenomenal. Yes, that specifically means deflect doesn't matter. It's the same reason why Iron Man's special, putting Raider on Iron Man, makes him always crit because the attacks that attack cannot miss. Oh no, no, that's not Iron Man, it's somebody else. Attacks that cannot miss or attacks that cannot be blocked, um, they always, they do their crit. So it wasn't specifically him, it was somebody else. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought on that one. Uh, passive. Again, as with most legendaries, the passives tend to be predominantly for the team, and that's what this does. Um, 
on enemy death fill astonishing x-men speed bars now the cool thing about this is if you just use her it still fills her speed bar by 25 percent, which is reasonable on each character x-men or wolverine allies you're not using fucking wolverine uh apply assist now to either self wolverine or astonishing x-men that's great because you don't need a full astonishing x-men team and it still benefits the characters you do put on think like the, how if you want to go back think that um yeah but can't miss doesn't mean can't be blocked Cannot miss doesn't mean cannot be blocked. They're not the same thing. Um, how do I explain? The BKT, which is Star-Lord, Rocket, Thanos, Minerva, and Groot. It existed out of the base of the core value of Star- At the time, Star-Lord, Rocket, and Groot. It, it made Rocket the primary AoE damage dealer with a single target nuke. Thanos served the purpose of being an off-tank from Groot who could also feed energy into Rocket, and Minerva fed so the energy as a passive healer with the ability to resurrect a character if things went wrong or take a giant, huge heal to the entire team. That team was one of the first iterations we had of a team that was better than any ver anything else you can do with those characters on their, their previous setup. The BKT was the first iteration. When you see something like this kit, you can now start seeing the the culmination of value from from building teams around these characters. She is a character that is going to be built around for raids. Now, yes, if you have the X Men, great, you're gonna have a place for her. But there's so much additional value for her outside of the X Men that she truly does hold her status as a legendary character. Uh, at least her kit does to, for that. So, again, we don't have all the numbers. We have estimations of numbers available on msf.gg and some information available to it, but we don't actually have the realistic numbers because while some people might say, at 7-7, seven, seven, her stats are insane, that's not really what matters. What matters is what happens the day you unlock her. You know, for me, whatever happens the day I unlock her is very different than what happens to the day of somebody who has four or five million TCP unlocking him. Because a person with four or five million TCP is very likely uh, has a roster built roughly around the same pattern, as opposed to someone who's at 10 million, where I need to invest quite a bit into her at five star and get high red stars on her, four, five, six, in order to get the value of that. So I think she is... Uh, a great legendary character. I think uh, she is worthwhile investing in Pimtech if uh, you are close enough and it's a reasonable line. And I think she's worth getting even at the cost of not getting uh, Bishop or Kitty Pride at any reasonable number. I think you should get them there. That's unrelated, and I don't want to get into that for this. So my final, uh, like just looking at these numbers, clearly she's a good character. I think she's going to be a relevant character in the meta, regardless of Doom 1 and whatever we talk about. She looks, the kit looks great. I'm very happy that I got my, my Pym Tech ready ahead of time. I'm happy for anybody who listened to me and got their Pym Tech ahead of time. Then moving to Bishop. Uh, I'm again, I'm not going to read any of the, 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 you know, the fluff text here. Hero, Cosmic Mutant, Blaster, Astonishing X-Men. Cosmic Mutant is interesting. There are now four Cosmic Mutants. Remember that? Seriously, remember that there are four Cosmic Mutants? Oh, sorry. I forgot to show you guys. Bop! <laughs> Um, listen, you're unlocking Ghibli's six star first run. Oh, yeah. I, I'm actually not that far away from unlocking a six star Ghibli, too. Uh, Cosmic Mutants unlock. Well, I don't know if they unlock something, but it's interesting that they're adding more Cosmic Mutants. So it's Shatterstar, Longshot, Cable, and Bishop now. So it's interesting. I'm interested. I also don't know of too many other Cosmic Mutants that could come out, but. The X-Factor is going to also have Cosmic Mutants. I'm just saying. There's a couple of other things. Um, uh, so we got Basic, right? Clear. Counter on primary target. Okay. Attack primary target for 270% damage. Irrelevant because we don't know his stats. Uh, then counter plus one. Then gain counter plus one up to a maximum of four. I believe the assist will probably also give him an extra counter, but I don't know for a fact. 
What, sleeping with Star Wars stuff? Uh, this attack cannot be counterattacked. This is a big, this is oddly huge. Uh, just because of the rest of his kid. This attack cannot be counterattacked. That's relevant. Uh, especially for raids. Uh, but I really think that that's interesting and way more important than the average can't be counterattacked attack. Like Symbiote Spider-Man's basic, you know. Uh, Retaliation Laser, ready on turn one, but won't be used on auto on turn one. That's relevant. Uh, attack primary target for 300% damage if Jubilee is an ally, which she should be. I actually really like the idea of using her and Cable together, even if you don't get the other characters. Attack primary target for uh, a little bit more. Jubilee gets offense and defense up. This attack is unavoidable and always crits. However, if you have block, you could still block. So it's relevant. So yes, Raider is for this ability is absolutely phenomenal. Unless you're going into somebody who has block. Because then it won't crit. Because it cannot crit. Uh, blast from the past. Energy cost 2. Attack primary and adjacent targets for 270 damage. If charged, attack 540 damage instead. This is insane. It's a two, <laughs> a two energy ult. He's just constantly firing nukes at people. And he's constantly gaining a charge. I believe... I, I didn't think that then, Kilowog. Now I do. Be, I have to see his numbers, but I'm guessing that uh, Bish, Bishop is now... That I'm best. I'm sorry. I'm guessing that now the Trinity for that team, the three characters that you should probably invest in, are Jubilee, Iceman, and Bishop, as opposed to before where I thought it was Jubilee, Iceman, and Beast. It still might be Beast over Iceman. I'd have to like really get a look at how the team feels before I start speculating on that. I want to feel it out first, but I'll figure it out. Fox. Um. Anyway. Energy redirection. On spawn, if charged, gain regeneration and clear charged. Which means in raids, if you, you know, you they carry over. On spawn, gain taunt and defense up. On attacked, which is not English good. <laughs> it should be when attacked. <laughs> if attacked. <laughs> On attacked. Technically correct. The best kind of correct. Gain charge and fill speed bar by 30%, then clear taunt. They go over their base stats? No, they go over their base stats at the highest possible level, which is irrelevant. They don't go over their base stats at meaningful enough levels. Uh, I think you're confusing the fact that the character isn't actually taunting all the time. And thing has a ton of HP. I think you guys are I think you guys are drawing the wrong conclusions. I think Bishop having similar stats to Thing makes him reason more reasonable because what he does is better than Thing. But that's my opinion. Feel free to skip this character if you'd like. Uh, at the end of this character's turn, if the character's health is greater than 80%, gain taunt. So he's just, you know. Booping around, constantly tanking and untanking. Think like kind of Hulk works. Uh, while this character has taunt, gain 20% damage reduction. So what does it matter that his, his health is a little bit lower if he takes 20% flat dam less damage whenever he's taunting? Like, I feel like that's a reasonable number. The stats we saw were 7 yellow, 4 red. Exactly. How many people are going to have a 7 yellow, 4 red uh, bishop on day one? I assume the answer to that question is none. Or not enough that uh, finding out that information is relevant. You know what I mean? Uh, 